kind of deeper in the black, uh, you know, helping you achieve emotional, financial, and physical well-being while helping you develop your craft for your parents because I am your life coach here. So uh, today's video, I'm going to talk about, you know, why. why. Why is it so important for you, be it man or woman, you know, mother, father, wherever you are in life, wherever you are in life, why is it important for you to, um, as I like to say, get over your parents? Um, when I say that, I don't mean like, it's not like, you know, break up, but to really truly heal and resolve the 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 pain that you still have from them. And when you, I have people who, who you know, some people I've, I've run into my life so far who, who, who are like, you know, my parents are horrible, they're still, they're still nasty, I don't, honor, I don't honor them anymore, I don't care what they do. And that's fine. Like, we can mentally get over something and be like, it, it is what it is, it's accepted. But that doesn't mean that you dealt with the emotional pain that is still there brewing inside of you to this day that still have an effect on you. It's like, you have to understand something. These issues that you have, your parents are the basis of your story for life, whether they're great or really shitty or somewhere in between. If that basis is fucked up or jacked up in any way, shape, or form, you can't have a very good... The chances of you, the chances, I'm not trying to say is it, it'll, it's going to determine your life, but it's going to have a huge impact on the kind of life you have, on who you are, the money you make, you, you shape everything in your life. It's like, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like if you're going to try to build a really tall, amazing building, you got to make sure the foundation is strong and, and set. If it's soft and weak and crap and the building starts leaning inside, well, it's not going to, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not going to work out that well for you. Would you agree on that? Okay. Yes. Here's the thing, your parent issues, you have mommy, dad, mommy issues, daddy issues, whatever it is, they affect you on a subconscious level, okay? And when it comes to your relationships, which is the biggest one, which I think most people can agree with, it's like, whatever you don't get from them, you're gonna search for that, or whatever you're taught from them, be it like love means getting abused, love means not getting abused, love means whatever it is, to keep it really, really simple, you subconsciously have that they also tell you things of like you're a piece of crap you're a piece of shit like blah 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 like whatever they tell you you buy because you don't know any better you come in this world wanting to love to be loved and so since this point in life they're the gods it's like whatever they tell you you're gonna buy so fortunately for a lot of people they've been fed a lot of bullshit things about themselves the world and how money works and weight and everything else so then you can look at yourself and go shit what happened well to truly, to truly understand where you're at I do believe I do believe you have to go back in the past and understand it, and that's where you can find the root cause of stuff. Okay, because the stuff they've told you is blocking you from the money you, the money that you want to make. For example, I've read in so many stories, um, Tony Robbins to T. R. Ecker, that there are people who who there are people who make a lot of money, but then for some reason can't seem to keep it. And why is that? Well, because some people grow up with the belief from their parents, maybe the parents told them directly, maybe the parents are always complaining about it, but they say, God, man, rich people are so fucking mean and greedy, and they don't share anything. So what happens? If that's what you hear throughout the years growing up, you then subconsciously, not consciously, subconsciously, subconsciously associate having lots of money means I'm a piece of shit, I'm greedy, and I'm mean. So here's what happens in that case. If you do manage to amass lots of money, You'll never keep it because subconscious, you're like, oh my God, you always feel guilty, you always feel bad. And you may not know why consciously, but you always will feel like shit because of it. Or you'll want to get lots of money, but you won't get a lot of money because you have the subconscious belief that if you have a lot of money, that means shit. That means if I have that, that means if I don't have a lot of money, I'm poor, I'm good. I'm accepted by friends. I'm loved that way. Does that make sense? And that's just money. Now, it goes a lot deeper in other areas, but the other thing, too, is when it comes to, let's just say, let's, let's talk about your physical well-being. If you were taught by your parents that you're ugly, you're disgusting, stupid, no man or woman, no man or woman will love you and stuff, and that, you know, you can never, you're not that strong, you're not that great, again, I'm keeping it simple, you're... There's a good chance that you're not going to pick the right food to eat. They're going to gain weight. As and, and and what's that from? Or in some cases, for some people, um, when there's molestation in the family, you know, from family members or from father or mother, whichever one, you'll put on weight. And why is that? Because it's a form of protection. Everything the subconscious does is it it it, it, it it's looking out for your own well-being. Things things that you're not always consciously aware of. And when we first come in this come in this world. Our conscious faculty is like barely there, if anything. So your subconscious is like, oh shit, let's look out for you, hold on. 
And, and your subconscious mind does not know what's true, what's not, what's good, what's bad. It, it takes it for what it is because it has to function and protect you on some level. Now, that level could be detrimental to you. It could be beneficial. It doesn't know, but that's its function, believe it or not. So when it comes to that example I was talking about, when, you know, losing weight and stuff, or you to protect yourself, you're gonna put on weight because if you put on weight, therefore no one wants you, you're not attractive, therefore you won't get hurt and you won't get raped or molested, whatever it is. So that's what happens. The problem is with all these subconscious things, your human being who wants to be, do, and have more. You're always looking to expand no matter what it is. You're always looking to expand what it is. So here's the thing. In those two examples, you know, getting fat for, for subconscious reasons or, you know, um, trying to make more money, right? But you're always giving away. You will want, in the case of, you know, when you're fat, you will want to at some point to lose weight because you don't like the way you look and you're happy with yourself. And you may, you, you may want a partner, so you want to do things. But the thing is, if you're not aware of what's going on subconsciously, you can consciously try to lose weight and try to attract people and you will sell you will self-sabotage yourself you subconsciously screw it all up because your subconscious mind saying no 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 no, you can't do it because if you do that oh my god i mean that puts us at risk for all this shit that could happen which is false not true you don't make money you'll want to make money a desire but in this case subconsciously you'll stop yourself one way that you could stop yourself is the fact that you may want more money but then the thought comes up and desire may come up but then you have this negative feeling that says no i shouldn't deserve more it makes you feel guilty that's one way or you'll try and work your ass off and you'll be like i'm not making enough i'm trying i'm always like something always seems to stop me what's going on and that's just from you know two factors there and that's why it's important because you will always have something that just puts you back four or five steps or in this or in some cases it's like when you issue your parents come about even when you do have success it'll come at a price and when things come at a price it just hurts you and screws you up for life your happiness should not come with the price of your health or something your health to get healthy should not come the price of you know screwing up your body like it doesn't really work out. You don't win in the end, you know? And because my issues with my mom and mother, true story with her, I would get ringworm a lot. Disgusting, but it's true. Now, I also found later on there was another reason why I was getting ringworm, but she was the main cause of it. I, I used to have a lot of anger, and the way it affected me, my relationships, I get offensive. People talk about, people talk about my mother, and, you know, like, watch well, your mom, and I would get mad, and, and it's like, you don't realize how it's affecting you on everywhere in your life, basically, okay? Like, for example, I remember growing up and being so nervous to ask my mom for shit, just to, like, if, could a friend come over? Because I never really knew she was in the mood to, to, to be asked a question because there are times she'd come home tired and annoyed and I'd be like, fuck, she's annoyed, I'm not gonna ask you anything or whatever it is. Or sometimes I'd ask her, like, can I do this? And she'd be like, no, I'm tired, da, da, da. And yeah, and I'd be like, fuck. So because of that, so because of that, I developed this habit or unconscious belief, whatever you want to call it, of when it came to asking for help on certain things, if I wasn't so sure you're going to say yes, I'd be so nervous about it. I'd be anxious about it. I would just hesitate like like crazy and ask you and put myself in, this, in the state of like confliction, of being conflicted, like, oh, do I ask? Do I not ask? I could ask. I, I just, I hated it. Hated it. To learn it from her, because this is how she was. That's one. Two. Now, one of the anger, I, the anger I had, I had against her. Not energetically, that affects me in other areas of my life. I believe that everything's energy, and um, my dad would tell me that, and I'd be like, bullshit. It's because the energy that I had towards her, the negative, the, the the anger I had toward her. Okay. So, when with that happening, I remember in high school, high school years up until, God, I was twenty-seven. So about sixteen. 17 years old till I was 27, 10 years, I shit you not, because the anger I held towards my mother, I would get a ringworm on the side of my arm, it would come about, and it would be there and expand and try not to itch it, I hate it, I, it was so so disgusting, and it would go away, and the thing is, it would happen I like clockwork around late fall, winter, and then go away 
Mm, in like the spring. I'm not lying to you as I say this. This is what I mean by pregnancy is affecting ways that you don't realize. And I made the connection until years later. But it would go away, come back, go away, come back, over and over. I went to the doctor, doctor's gonna figure it out. I took Tenactin, all that shit. It didn't fucking matter because it's coming from a place of emotional pain that you're not resolved for me, for me not resolving. Now, everyone's got different things, things manifest differently for who you are. But for me, my point is that like this shit would come back and it wouldn't stop. And I was like, holy shit, what's going on? It wasn't until I finally released the anger and forgave my mom and so loved for who she is that it went away <laughs> on its own without taking a medicine, without going to the doctor, anything else. Now. I did more forgiveness, I will say this, that it came with a friend, because once I once I gave her, then came back, I was like, what the fuck? Because it also, I realized it was also a friend of mine who I hadn't, for, I hadn't forgave, him. and I wasn't mad at them, I was upset, I'm all good in that story. But once I forgave them both, it never come back since then. Ever. And what's the other point? Forgiveness is key. By not forgiving someone, you are fucking yourself. They don't have a bad life. They don't go through shitty things because you because because you haven't forgiven them. It's you. You're the one that hurts yourself. You're the one that stabs yourself. But you don't realize it. You're fucking yourself the entire time. That's the best way I can say it. And it's true. And I've sweat so many times that I thought it's bullshit because you want to feel powerful. You want to feel stronger. I'm like nah, that's bullshit. You want to screw you. All you do, all you do is screwing yourself. You can not forgive them, and it won't affect them in any way. It doesn't affect them. But you're not gonna see that. It doesn't matter. It's like. They're not dying from you. They're not dying because you're not forgiving them. If you think that by not forgiving them, it's going to make your life hell, it's, it doesn't. It never has. It just screws you up. So, try to make my case and point as best I can at this moment in time that by not resolving this shit, it's going to haunt you for the rest of your life. And I'm telling you, there's something very freeing about being at peace with your parents because you feel better about yourself you think about your life, and you feel like you just relax. There's a certain level of that you can just relax and be like, wow, it's going to be okay. I've gone through this shit. Now, where you choose to honor them and to love them is on you, but if you're at peace with it, dude, your life is like so much better. Because then from there, everything else that was being negatively impacted turns around changes and you also you also will feel inside that 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 a wound has finally healed and you're like ah oh, like is there's this calm soothing energetic relief and you can then look to them different and go well, that sucks for them we go out go out, go off and have fun so i'm telling you why you resolve this shit because it affects you and if you have children it affects your children because the shit you have issues with your parents, you you can subconsciously wound your children. I don't think you want to do that. It happens. My mother is an example of having issues with her parents, issues with herself, issues with her family, which she hasn't resolved, and then gets not passed on, I would say, but then it impacts the way she raises her children and the way she uses life. It, it does. The issues you have don't care they're not exclusive it they bleed out to all of your life that's my point my mother's issues and, and she and, and this is where i am right now so i'm doing, doing the channel because of her issues that she's had that she has refused refused to deal with that's why i get in this video this is why i'm doing this because it's impact our relationship to point we're not to, to point we're right now at, at this moment in time we're not talking we've exchanged birthday cards but that's it so I'm telling you, if that happens with my mother, what makes you think that by you not resolving the issues with your parents, it's not having an impact in your life in the ways that, that don't serve you, that you don't want? It is. And if you have children and issues with one parent that you have not successfully resolved, if you're not aware of it, if you haven't made the conscious decision to be like, you know what, I don't want to be like my mom or my dad, I'm going to be different. But you still have these issues. These issues are still having an impact because you may be subconsciously doing shit and not realize it. Now, that, my friend, is not easy to do, but it's worth looking into. Because it's going to affect you, man. Because it's going to affect them, you know, if you, especially if you have grandchildren. 
and it makes it awkward where the parent, where the parent you have issues with is not cool with you but loves your grandchildren, you're kind of like, that's fucked up. You're leaving me out because you're still the child. You're still their, their seed legacy and no child, I don't give a fuck who you are, likes to be shut out or completely ignored on purpose by their mom or dad. It sucks. It's a shitty feeling. You're just like, what the fuck? Skip over me, bring talk to my sister or my brother or my or your grandchildren, but not me. I was like, hello. Especially, if you, especially if you have children and your, and your parents still still an issue with you. It's like, hello, you shouldn't be here because of me. What the fuck? But parents who have issues don't think rationally. They're not rational. They're just in their own universe, literally in their own universe, with the rules that they think works for them, and it really fucks them. But whatever, you can't change them. So, hopefully, at this point, get over this shit, resolve it. I can help you. Because you'll feel at peace. You'll feel at peace. You'll be happy. You'll feel relaxed. The thought of them won't bother you. In fact, you won't even think about them. When you talk about them, you might still be a little riled up, but you'll be like, but you'll have the same confidence that, like, I'm over this shit. I'm okay with it. That's them. Peace. Your life, your, your the quality of life will, will increase. You know, it'll become better. Just, I mean, man, I, you mean to see this huge jump? But just enough for you to go, it was worth it. Because then you can. I don't know, you can just go on and just be happy with, more importantly, who the fuck you are. Which is what it comes down to the end of the day. At the end of the day, this, 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 this thing about resolving issues with your parents isn't about them. It's about you. Getting, getting, getting you to a point, to a place where you feel cool with who you are. And being able to realize that I can go over this and I, there's so much more you can do. So much more love you can give. And when you get to the point, God, it's a good feeling of like, oh telling you it's worth doing and, you, and you'll thank yourself so hope this helps like the video please share it if you got any value from especially if you watch this the whole thing this is a long video by the way no long video if anyone's watched the video all the way to the end i will offer you two free coaching sessions on this we gotta watch it over the end though because if you did well you missed out on a good offer all right my friends get in the black let me know your thoughts or in the comments comments below too peace